Hello guys and welcome to this video. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some Belepharitis safe-ish or what I consider safe makeup. Um, I say this because I have a lot of videos out on Belepharitis already and I know you guys are probably sick of them. <laughs> Those of you that don't use them, they're pro you're probably sick of them. However, um, it is good to know what makeup is really good for sensitive eyes and just my tips with like makeup in general when it comes to issues like this because I do get a lot of messages about um, basically everything. People wondering what's best to use, what's kind of safe. Obviously what's safe is down to your eyes anyway, it's all a little bit down, you know, down to you and it's a bit up for debate. Um, I do have a skincare video already which I will link down below for you guys if you want to check that out which is just like skincare that I've found that is pretty good, pretty safe um, if you have blepharitis basically and I want to talk about some makeup things and my kind of thoughts and recommendations today so you guys know what I like to use and what I can use and things like that. So I'm actually going to start with base makeup and I know this sounds really silly but I used to find that I couldn't even wear base makeup that much when I struggled with my eyes a lot however when it comes down to concealer like concealing under the eyes and things like that I've had one concealer that I've used for freaking years and it never like gets in my eyes and stings my eyes like sometimes like today I got it like on the inner uh, like lash line of my eyes and I just kind of wiped it off or worked it in and it doesn't like upset my eyes or anything like that it doesn't give me any issues um, again we have the light coming and going today I hope you guys don't mind that um, we just got to work we got we got to work what we got <laughs> so um, that concealer is the MAC Pro Long Wear Concealer. I have the shade NC15 but that's not really that relevant. Um, it comes out in a pump so you can use as much or as little as you like. Um, don't worry about waste, this goes a very long way um, and it will last you ages. It says to only use this up to six months but you can get away with using it a bit longer. Obviously if you want to ditch it any sooner you do that. Um, it's a pretty kind of hygienic way of having a concealer because you just pump it out um, other than like if you rub this on your brush or anything like that um, it's not like you have you know you have somewhere it's like the dough for applicators and stuff they're not as hygienic because obviously you're just dipping it back in there so this is actually quite a hygienic way of having a concealer and storing it as a product um, because obviously hygiene is utmost important if you do have any eye infections or anything like that um, or skin infections and you may be saying okay blepharitis isn't an infection but it can cause eye infections you can have a flare which can cause an eye infection so things like that sounds awful silly but really does make a big difference um, and how I like to apply them I found the best way to apply them is with beauty sponges um, I tend to use the pointed tip so if you don't have one with a pointed tip go and get one like this where it has like the teardrop tip basically so that you can get oil up in there um, these are also really good for using setting powders to set under your eyes uh, without like poking yourself in the eye with a brush basically. I do sometimes use a brush and just sweep it across however you can just get this in some powder like loose powder and just kind of just tap it on like that and you get no fallout, no mess basically whatsoever and it doesn't upset the eyes or anything. Um, if you guys are interested in a powder, a loose one that I'd recommend that is quite affordable I recommend the Rimmel Match Perfection one in translucent is what I use not the easiest to carry around with you but uh, quite nice safe doesn't really give me any eye irritation when I apply it especially with the sponge method so that's my kind of base Ooh, my base tip oh no I think it's gone forever uh, guys I think we need to say RIP to my beauty blender because it's fell out my hand and uh, I don't know where it's gone. So, RIP to my beauty blender. Luckily you weren't my favorite anyway, but never mind. Uh, <laughs> shall, we, shall we carry on and I'll find that after, hey? Yeah, let's do that. So now I'm gonna go on to eyes and eyes are obviously the main issue here. So, mascara, if you are having a flare up, just don't bother, <laughs> just don't bother. Um, you can just do base and you know do some light eyebrows unless you have super thick eyebrows and you can probably make it look like a reasonable look. Um, don't worry too much about not wearing mascara. I'll be honest, I've done four makeup looks and forgot to put some on and it made it work. So don't panic yourself too much. Obviously you might want to be a bit more stringent on throwing out your mascaras uh, quicker than you usually would. Uh, this one, 
I think I've got to peel it off to find out the expiry on it. Let's see if we have one with an expiry. This one is uh, a brand new one that I haven't started yet, but it says that the expiry on this is six months. So if I were you, I'd definitely chuck it out after those six months, if not beforehand, if you finish it or not. Um, I'm still trying to find ones that work. I've had some that really didn't work for me. Um, there was a Urban Decay one. Uh, I think it was the Perversion Mascara. That one really set me off. This one I found to be really good. It is the Makeup Revolution Amazing Volume. Doesn't add volume, adds length. <laughs> I don't know why it's called Amazing Volume. Uh, but it seems to sit pretty nicely and not cause me too much hassle. It's just got a big brush. Um, it's a little bit like some of the product flies everywhere. It's not the greatest quality mascara, but I can wear it all day and it doesn't give me too much jip at the minute. So yeah, I'm gonna go on to the next bit, which is basically eyeliners and stuff like that and eyeshadows. Eyeshadows don't get ones that have loads of fallout. If you want to just get eyeshadows just get some nice quality ones so that you're not like fighting to get it out of your eye. Um, I think that I'd go without saying don't buy shitty eyeshadows and put them on your eyes but uh, yeah you know I don't have any issues when it comes to using uh, eyeshadow palettes I've had for a while I've never had that issue whether I did you know whether I'm having a flare up or not I've never had that issue in theory it shouldn't be going like in your eye if you know what I mean so it shouldn't really be an issue for you guys too much um, it's more eyeliner and stuff that's a big hoo-ha I have managed to find at the minute one that I can wear in my waterline which I don't do waterline eyeliner very often because one I hate it two it's gross three it hurts four blepharitis doesn't agree with it ever um, but I have been able to since my eyes have been loads better recently have been able to use one and is actually the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eyeliner basically I think the idea is pick one that's super smooth and not like hard so you're not like rubbing away at your your eyelid basically this one's super smooth um, I've only got this in like the brown colour um, I think it came in a set but anyway I have this one, I quite like it, I don't use it very often but if I, if I do want to do anything in my waterline this will be the one I'll pick out over the others because this one gives me the least issues I think like I say because it's a nice soft kind of crayon instead of like a really dry hard one and um, it kind of doesn't like crumble away into your eye it just glides on and that's that. When it comes to other eyeliners I would avoid gel liners a bit, I think gel liners just dry up too easily and crack and they can just fall into your eye or if you do it on your waterline they can really be in your eye. Um, I would prefer personally to not go near them too much. I've tried uh, some drugstore ones and some high-end ones. I know the Benefit one doesn't work for me but they do dry out and when they dry out they tend to get so crusty and they'll just crumble into your eye which will just create more crap in your eye. You'll end up sticking your dirty fingers in there and clearing it out, stuff like that. It's not worth the trouble. So I'd recommend liquid liner if you're going to do it. Still wouldn't recommend putting this in the waterline just for like cat eyes and flicks and stuff like that. If you can muster that up, you know, I, do, I don't do it very often still because I find that just a lot of eye makeup, like liquid stuff between mascaras and liquid liners, it can all get a little heavy and too much for me to wear like for a full day. So what I'll do if I'm wearing a full day of makeup, I'll probably skimp on the eyeliner and just do like a smoky eye or something like that. Probably is what I'll do. One that I really like is the Soap and Glory Super Cat Eye one. And it is a liquid eyeliner pen. So it's just like a felt tip pen, which a felt tip pen I think is the easiest way to do it. Um, this one has actually got the product built in into it and the nib is like super fine. This nib doesn't shed. If you find any that like shed or like a, the, you can see like the fabric kind of coming away, like little bits of fluff coming away, fucking bin that shit. That's not going to help you. <laughs> it's not going to help you. Um, you want something that's really sturdy, really well built. The tip that's not going to like flail around and just shed itself into your eyeballs. That's no good. Um, this one is actually a drugstore and I think this is about £12. So this isn't too bad. A little bit pricey but I don't think it's too bad at all um, so I would definitely recommend it. The wear time for this before you chuck it out is six months. I would again go by the six months if you are having real problems because you don't want to be putting more germs in your eyeballs. It's pretty obvious but you know it sounds really stupid but 
you know, do we listen to these dates? I know I don't listen to them like 90% of the time because I don't get through makeup that quick. So I know I don't listen to them all the time. And then my last other tip with eyeliner is if you just need to avoid it completely, just get rid of it, banish it from your life uh, for a while and you can just use eyeshadows. I used to do this all the time because I was so scared of using eyeliner because I thought it was just gonna like kill my eyes. Uh, get a flat brush. It can be a thinner brush than this or whatever. This is the one I like to use just because it's easier because it's a bit longer so you can get good coverage and do it a bit quicker. Uh, this is just a body shop one. It's the eyeshadow brush by the body shop. Um, and then I have my Naked Tea palette here because this has a perfect matte black eyeshadow in it at the very end. So this will be the last one here on the right hand side. This is what I used to do when I couldn't or didn't want to wear eyeliner. The only thing I will say is I would definitely try using uh, some eyeshadow primer uh, setting your eyes because sometimes if you get oily lids or anything obviously this can move around on your eyes and smudge a little bit but you know what if it smudges just kind of turn it into a smoky eye I guess and just work with it but it's not the end of the world like I'd say for a good couple of hours wear time it will stick and stay um, unless you do have really super oily lids but I just think it's a much it takes a little bit of time to finesse it and get it right so you don't flip eyeshadow everywhere but if you get the right brush and you take your time you do it right it just looks a little not as intense as liquid eyeliner which is actually kind of nice I think it's kind of a nice look um, but if you are struggling to wear loads of makeup anyway you don't want super intense parts on your face anyway you kind of want to just like, balance it out a bit you know the only other thing I can recommend to you guys other than all these tips is if you really are struggling that bad but you feel that you have to wear something get yourself maybe a pore minimizing primer or uh, a blurring primer and then try a mineralized powder foundation just as a base just to kind of even your skin tone out if you don't want to put anything anywhere else um, and even if you want to contour that a little bit you know you can just bronze it up a little bit something like that you don't have to go ham don't feel that you have to wear makeup all the time because i don't wear makeup like 90 percent of the time and people don't even make a thing of it like it's not a thing unless you make it a thing um it's only going to be down to you and your expectations and how self-conscious you are about your skin i have good skin luckily um however i notice when i'm run down and my eyes are bad my skin is a lot blotchier because sods law and that's just being run down and poorly it's kind of just the way it goes but honestly don't don't let what anyone says to you bug you or you know because no one really unless they've had this can really understand or appreciate how uh awful it can actually be like it's really horrible like mentally and physically it's not very nice physically it hurts um and it's not very nice to deal with you have to take time out of your day to manage it and people don't realise, they think you just haven't washed your eyes and it's like, no, that's not the case at all. But no, try not to let them bother you because they don't even know the half of it. So, you know, you just go do you. You go home, you look after your eyes, the more you look after them and the more you keep them clean, the less crap you get in them, so the less makeup you leave on them and things like that, they will get a bit better and they will fare a bit better from that sort of treatment. So I would definitely not say like go ham and put loads of heavy makeup on especially around your eyes and also one of my things that i really don't recommend is false eyelashes whether that is glue ones or whether that is the semi-permanent ones i have read into this quite a bit and i've heard a lot of people actually getting blepharitis from the semi-permanent ones because it doesn't allow you to wash your eyes properly or your eyes to clean themselves properly because you've got this stuff on here that's not meant to be on here um, i don't know how much merit there is to that seems to make logical sense to me because I looked on a lot of forums and there was a lot of this happening. Obviously false eyelashes anyway, the glue is not going to help you I imagine. So I don't wear them ever at all. Um, the only thing that might be worth a pun, I haven't tried them myself, maybe I should, is these magnetic eyelashes that have come out but I'll have to maybe give those a try if you guys want me to try them and let you know how they are for people with blepharitis as a kind of, uh, you know, like a stopgap if you can't wear lashes for now and stuff like that let me know in the comments and i'll sort that out for you guys i'll get some ordered and we'll test them out on camera i'll do first impressions and see how i feel about them and i hope you guys found this useful i know it's a bit hard um trying to get all this figured out the more the more i can give you the more help 
I can give you guys and the more I learn from what I should and shouldn't be putting on my face hopefully it helps you guys avoid the mistakes I made and yeah just some tips for you guys to help you guys feel a bit better and a bit more in the know about what is worth buying to risk and what isn't every other video to do with Bleff Artist will be linked down below if you guys want to check it out I have skincare ones, I have frequently asked questions, I have living with it, dealing with it, I have my eye routine and everything so if you guys need any more info chances are there's probably already a video on it if there's not you can always leave me a comment or drop me a message I always check so and I always reply so just let me know okay guys hope you feel better soon